Greetings, YouTube. The governor of Punjab in Pakistan was assassinated this week by his bodyguard. The governor supported repealing blasphemy laws in Pakistan. For those who are, who are unfamiliar with this concept, blasphemy laws are where a person can be arrested, fined, jailed, or even executed if they speak out against the state religion. And the, government wanted, the governor wanted these laws repealed allowing a more open and free religious environment in Pakistan. His bodyguard did not. His bodyguard decided that this governor was such a danger to these blasphemy laws that the only way to stop the governor was to kill him. Now, I, can, I know right now that most people watching this are going to be thinking to themselves, that's horrible, and it speaks well of you, and it is horrible. There are also going to be people who are thinking to themselves, well, you know, those Islamic countries, they're just crazy. And religious fundamentalism is never a good thing, and a state religion is never healthy for a government. But it has nothing to do with the particular religion it involved. Any state religion is bad. Any religious fundamentalist view is unhealthy. The key is to do away with blasphemy laws completely, regardless of the country in question. In this particular case, it's Pakistan. In this particular case, it's Islam. But there have been blasphemy laws in other places dealing with Christianity. There are laws outlawing out religion outright in, in uh, China, though I believe they've uh, been relaxed quite a bit over the years. Um, but these kinds of laws have been around for centuries. It's just that there are a few places where they're still in effect, and Pakistan is one of them. And I, of course, it's a civil libertarian, believe in a religious freedom, am also opposed to them. And I know that there are going to be people here in America who are going to speak out about this, as I am, call it a horrible crime, as it is, but they're going to take the stance that Islam itself is to blame for this, and it isn't Islam. They're going to say that, you know, these people are trying to take over the world, and they're not. There are a handful of radicals in the world, and some of them happen to be Islamic. But the vast majority of people are peace-loving, law-abiding citizens, and that's pretty much everywhere. Most people just don't want to get through their life day to day, live their lives, and die happy. They don't want to take over the world. And a lot of the people I encounter online, particularly, for example, in the uh, videos I did on the Switzerland ban on minarets, take the stance that Islam is the enemy. And Islam isn't the enemy. Religious fundamentalism, zealotry, is the enemy. But also, religious bigotry, religious discrimination, are also the enemy. And here in America, we have religious freedom. We have a secular government. But there are people who would like to destroy that concept, who would throw away the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, and establish a religious government, a state religion here in America. Now, because it's America and 78% of the population is Christian, I would just assume that that would be a Christian religion. Though I have no idea how they would decide which Christian religion. There are hundreds of them. The wars that would break out over trying to decide who should be in charge would be horrendous. I don't think most people who think about a quote-unquote Christian nation ever really fathomed the kind of damage they would be doing to their friends and neighbors when they start shooting at each other because one belongs to one church and, and their neighbor belongs to another. Separation of church and state is the healthiest attitude to have for both the state, the secular government, and the sectarian faiths. It keeps them separate, it allows them to function in parallel without interfering with each other. And there are guidelines some question those guidelines. I personally question a lot of the tax exempt status that a lot of religious organizations have in America. They make a whole lot of money, folks, and they're not being taxed on that, and that bothers me. But religious polarity, I think, is healthy. Diversity is healthy. I like to see different views or points of view. It's good for us. To be exposed to how other people think keeps you thinking yourself. It keeps you from getting stayed and stuck and dogmatic. So I grieve for this man and his family. I wished his bodyguard had found a better way of expressing himself. But I don't hold it against 
Islam. I don't hold it against this, the, the people in Pakistan that want to do away with the blasphemy laws. I hold it against the people that want to keep church and state mingled in a way that is unhealthy. They need to be separate. And I know that the separation of church and state is not in the Constitution or, or Bill of Rights in America. But both of these documents are free of God, and that was deliberate. They could have established a state religion. They chose not to. There's a reason for that. They saw the damage it does to the world around them, even in the 18th century. So I hope that people can look at this as an example of why we need to keep church and state separate. Not as a clarion call to discrimination and bigotry against Islam or any other faith, but as a reminder of why faith and state need to be separate.